Welcome back. International Relations and Cooperation Minister Naledi Pando has reiterated South Africa's call for dialogue to end Russia's invasion of Ukraine. She gave a briefing yesterday after South Africa abstained from voting on a resolution to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Commission. At least 93 countries voted in favor, while 24 opposed the move. To discuss this further, the head of the Brent Brenthurst Foundation, Greg Mills, joins us now. A very good morning to you, Greg, and thank you so much for joining us. So, are we looking at a matter of South Africa not wanting to upset its allies to the West as well as its allies at Kremlin? Well, I think South Africa is probably motivated by several things. One is what the foreign minister said, which is to try and <clears throat> play some sort of mediating role, appear to be a neutral partner. Uh, another may be because the ANC has had uh, very strong links with Russia over time. It, of course, had links with the, with the Soviet Union during the Cold War, but, of course, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, so it's probably the links that exist with Russia since 1990, and particularly investment and personal links. Uh, and, and it's also because the ANC government sees itself as non-aligned, and that means that it tries to steer a path and not take sides. But, of course, one should argue that trying to draw moral equivalence on everything all the time, and the foreign minister spoke quite a lot about Palestine in her briefing, is actually wrong in, in instances where, you know, there have been outrageous acts against civilian, the civilian population in Ukraine. And, you know, one has to ask the question, what would it take for South Africa to condemn Russia in terms of what it's doing in Ukraine? It's invaded another country yeah. based on that country's choices. And it, it really does beg the question, you know, what to what extent would a country have to go before we actually said, stop it, that what you're doing is wrong? Greg, it could be said that South Africa is just not putting its money where its mouth is at. They are going out there to criticize Russia in saying that what is happening there, you know, is, 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 not, is not going according to international law. But then when it's time to vote on resolutions to suspend Russia from the Security Council, you are abstaining. So why go out there and criticize if you're not going to back that criticism up with some kind of action? Yo, yeah, well, why say that you're trying to mediate when, in fact, you're, you're not mediating? Uh, that you, you're trying to, you know, play a go-between role between Ukraine and Russia when clearly Ukraine doesn't want you to play that role because you're not seen as a neutral partner. It's a little like trying to play a role between Israel and Palestine when we're not seen as a neutral partner. I think the question is, I mean, I think you're right. I think our, our approach is very limp-wristed. Um, we, we, we sort of criticise. We don't quite bring ourselves to criticise. Uh, and then we don't do anything in the United Nations or just simply abstain, which is as good as doing nothing. But I think there's a, there's a more profound consequence to this than just voting patterns, mm. and that is that the government is in many respects subverting the very values and institutions and principles that propelled them to power in the first instance and actually protect them in power today. Mm. I mean, that's the deep irony of this. And if you... If you put South Africa's name, uh, if, you, if you put apartheid regime's name in where Russia is and, and um, the South African population's name in where Ukraine is, we would have definitely seen that as being made as an argument for increased international intervention in the 1970s and 1980s in the case of South Africa. So we're really failing in our imagination to try and you know, see this in terms of a human rights struggle um, as well as a, an issue of international law and sovereignty, which, of course, it is, yeah. but to see this in terms of human rights and the abuses that have been perpetrated in, through our own experience. Just before we let you go, Greg, um, war is, has long-term effects. Law, uh, war is a long game. So you're not going to win by sitting on the fence throughout that long game. So what is South Africa's plan in this particular case? What should be their plan? Because they're going to have to get off that fence and back somebody. Well, I don't think they necessarily agree with you. I think that they probably find the fence quite comfortable because it means that they don't have to take sides. You're absolutely right. This is going to drag on for some time. The next month is going to be crucial as to whether the Ukrainians can hold out of the, of the, of the very uh, powerful Russian push in the east and in the south. And it may indeed escalate, given that NATO 
members have now committed greater heavy weaponry to Ukraine. And as a consequence of that, there are likely to be greater human rights abuses of the sort that we saw in Bucha just last week. So South Africa is going to be morally obligated to say something and to do something, perhaps even, as, as you would term it, vote against Russia at some point. But I, would, uh, I wouldn't, put my, uh, wouldn't back my house on that. I think that we, we find it very hard to, to take any position that looks remotely like siding with the West on these issues. Now, of course, Greg, thank you so much for joining us here on the South African Morning. That is uh, Greg Mills from the Brenthurst Foundation.